Hi guys, welcome back to the Blood, Sweat and Gears YouTube channel. I'm Stingy Roger and today we're going to be tackling a very popular video. I've been asked a load of times about all the mods on my bike and if you saw last week I put up a poll on my community page asking what you'd like to see next and the mod list was by far the most selected option. Before we get into the video, if you're new around here, please hit that subscribe button, leave me a like, drop me a comment, it really helps with the algorithm and if you're an existing subscriber, well thanks for the support, I really appreciate it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the mods, I'm going to start at the front and work our way to the back and then at the end of the video I'm going to say what my top five favourite and most essential mods were and then I'm also going to show you what I regret. So I'm going to say what mods you don't really need and are a waste of money. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm also going to list everything that I'm about to show you in the description. So if there's anything you're interested in, you'll find it there. So starting at the front, this is actually a standard wheel, but I've put some SM Pro stickers on it. I do have an SM Pro front wheel, but because I've already got my nice tyre on here, I can't bother to change it over just yet. <laughs> so... The tyre on this is a Midas TerraForce tyre, it's a 70-119, I love this tyre, it's so good, it's probably my favourite front tyre, I've had it on for almost a year now and it's hardly even worn, so that's great, thoroughly recommend one of them. Um, the brakes, I did have Magura MT5 brakes on the front, but I've gone back to stock recently, we'll get into it, but don't recommend the MT5s, um, this is a standard disc, standard brake and standard pads. I've got some little red anodized bolts, you can get those off of Amazon, and I've just painted the center of the, uh, the rotor black, so you can see these bolts nicer. So working back from the front wheel, this is where things get a bit juicy, we've got some Bomber 58 forks. On the front of the forks, I've got a Stag carbon fiber downhill number plate. This is a nice touch, but very expensive. Um, on top of the forks, I've got a Reese Racing drop crown. I'll insert a clip of me installing that now, because I only installed that last week. Coming up, I have some Bergtech spacers attached to a DMR stem. This stem is really nice, it's lightweight, it's got a bit of a rise and it just looks really cool. Inside the stem, I've got some Dirty, 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 however you say it, 787 handlebars. I think these are the perfect whip for one of these bikes. Um, but yeah, and then I've got a, <laughs> if you come in close, I've got a Shimano Dior lever on one side which pairs to my rear Magura. And then I've got a standard Teleria on the, the other side, which is the obviously the standard front. Um, still got the standard throttle. I don't think see the need for upgrading that. I might in the future. I have heard good things, but mine feels pretty good. And then around the display, I've got this Urban Moto Pro display case. So inside my headset and stem, I've actually got a headlock. So it just goes through and clamps it all together. This is by a brand called Gusset. And then if you can see my ignition, I've got some red anodized bolts, the same as my brake rotor bolts, uh, it comes in a kit, but yeah. On the front of the bike, I obviously have my KO Nano controller. Underneath that, I have a prototype bash guard that I'm testing for a company. As you can see, it's not welded up yet, but uh, in a few weeks, I will have a video out and this will be already available for everyone in the UK to purchase. I think that's quite exciting as it's the first UK aftermarket bash guard that's actually thicker than standard. Above that, we've got the Electron Cycles 60 volt, 63 amp hour battery. This is currently pushing out 13 kilowatts, and I love it. Standard motor. Um, on the frame, we've got some lovely graphics. These are actually from Orange Juice Customs. I did make a video last week on these, so go check that out if you haven't already. They've got a Cosmo uh, glitter flake in them, and they are cut perfectly. They are literally the best graphics I've ever seen. So on the frame of the bike, I have some really important frame protection. This is really good if you wear moto boots. I've got it on the swing arm as well as on this part of the frame. You can get a larger one, but I prefer this size because you can still have your nice graphics. Your knees don't really wear the paint away like moto boots do. So yeah, very important. Uh, underneath that, we've got some foot pegs. These are broken at the moment. I'm looking to get some new ones. They are really good and really grippy, but the Amazon special don't really fit very well. So I've had to rig it up with some... Um, o-rings and some elastic the other side's fine but i this one's just completely worn away for suspension on the rear i've got an ext armor mx shock this thing is incredible it literally feels like a motocross bike um i thoroughly recommend it very expensive but really worth it attached to that i have a urban moto pro cnc anodized red linkage uh the stock linkage has a bit of play in it and plastic bushes this has metal 
bearings and is much better. It just makes the whole motion of the suspension feel smoother to me. So now we're at the back of the bike. This is where all the fun stuff is. So this is actually my new rear wheel setup. I have a 17 inch SM Pro wheel with a Teleria hub, stainless steel spokes and nipples, which is good. Um, they're also thicker and stronger than the standard ones. I love it. Uh, I have some red Urban Moto axle adjustment blocks. These are great as you don't actually, the bolt goes through the block and it holds it in. I have a uh, JXR Racing 48 tooth rear sprocket. This is anodized red. The standard rear sprocket is 44 tooth. So I think 48 tooth is a good sort of, 4850 tooth is a good sweet spot. Now tire, this is a Kenda K270 tire in a 3.5 by 17. Did make a video on this so again if you haven't seen that already go check it out i'll leave a link in the description great tire for summer nice deep tread but also good contact patch for on the hard surfaces and on the dusty trails at this time of year and the last part of the bike build is actually a the magura mt5 rear brake caliper i have an urban moto uh rotor guard so this is really good if you're going over logs or bumps it stops anything from hitting and potentially bending your rotor paired up to a standard Teleria rear rotor now the Teleria has its own uh, bolt hole pattern you can't actually find any rotors other than the cheap sort of floating anodized colored ones and I've seen some horror stories of them snapping at the floating section but yeah that pretty much wraps up all of the custom parts and modified parts on this bike so now We'll get you back on the tripod and I'll go through what I think was the top five best mods and also the worst mods. So yeah, number one on the list of my favorite and most essential upgrades is the front fork. So this is a Bomber 58. It's identical to a 2021 Fox 40. You're just not paying for the shiny gold coating and the extra adjustment knob, which no one ever notices the difference from anyway. So yeah, that is a great upgrade. I can tackle tricky terrain like never before, hit jumps without bottoming them out. You can put tokers in so you can make it a lot more progressive in its um, suspension compression. But yeah, that is an excellent, excellent upgrade. And I thoroughly recommend if you've still got stock forks, get a pair of upgraded forks, whether it's the Fox 40s, the Bomber 58s, Fast Ace, the forks are really crucial. So second on my list is this EXT Armor Shock. I mean, again, same as the front, it just makes the riding experience completely different. It gives you a new level of confidence. You can just tackle any jump, bumps, or challenging terrain like you would on an enduro bike. The one thing that I would say is, though, that this is very expensive, this shop, for what it is. If you don't have the cash I'd, and you've got like a KKE or DNM uh, shock, I'd suggest trying out the Fast Day shock of the Teleria. They are readily available for a couple hundred, so you could throw that on it i have one on my Suron, and that's also a pretty good shock so yeah that's a good option for those of you that don't want to fork out the thousand or so for the ext number three it's got to have to be this battery this is a 63 amp hour battery as i said earlier i can get 60 to 70 miles of range out of it i never have range anxiety in fact i actually get worn out before the battery's flat it is that good um i've got it set tuned to 13 kilowatts and even at that level of tune i can pretty much ride until my arms can't hold on anymore it is absolutely fantastic if you're in the market for an upgraded battery and you live in the uk check out electron cycles this is my favorite that i've tried i've tried some 72 volts um they are very very powerful but this has just an amazing level of range so yeah so number four on the list is this Midas terraforce front tire now this is actually the lightest tire you can buy for this bike other than the standard tire but it's wider, taller, and much, much, much more grippy. You can get it in various different compounds, and it's actually a fairly cheap upgrade. It just makes a world of difference. No more washing out on the front wheel when you're braking. Um, it, it handles the mud and slop brilliantly. And then in the summer, I'm still running it, and it's it's, it's firm enough not to burn away. So yeah, great investment. Um, thoroughly recommend that. The final most essential upgrade is this drop crown. So not only does it look amazing, but if you have the... Bomber 58s, Fox 40s, um, any forks. This allows you to uh, position the fork legs wherever you want. So you can pull the fork legs down if you're a taller rider and want the front raised up. You can you can push the front end down and have it a bit lower if you're shorter. It just gives you the flexibility where it's got such a drop, such an extreme drop. 
The Fox 40s do come with a, a, a slight drop crown, but it's nothing like this. This just gives you a load of customization. And since putting this on last week, it's really made the geometry of my bike much better. Um, I did have to import this from the US, so if you're in the UK, I'm sorry, but it's not a cheap option. But if you're already in the US, it's great. Head over to his eBay page. I'll put the link in the description where you can grab yourself one. And I'm not affiliated with them. I just love the product. Now we've done my favorite five top upgrades, I'm going to say that there is one thing that I've put on this bike which I really regret, and that's the Magura MT5 brakes. I would stay away from them if I was you. The pads are awkward and fiddly. The uh, bleeding process is a pain in the butt. I've bled so many Shimano levers and they're like way easier. There should be, Maguras take about 10 bleeds before you get it right. And then afterwards, you've still got a spongy lever for a month and then it just suddenly sorts itself out. I believe it's part of the design in the uh, master cylinder assembly, but I'm not willing to like mess around with them any longer. I would have already changed it like I did for the front. But I cut the cable in half when I took it off, so uh, yeah, I'm stuck with that. But yeah, uh, overall, this bike has cost me £12,000 or $15,000. Would I say it's worth it? It depends, really, on what you prioritise. I ride this bike multiple times a week, and I love it. And I have been riding bikes since I was 13 years old. So for me, this is an absolute game changer. I've got the motocross speed, the enduro handling, and then I've also got the the discreetness of a mountain bike basically the silence is priceless um i can take it wherever i want but yeah if, the, if you have any questions on my build please drop them in the comments below um, i appreciate you watching i will link everything that you see here in the description so if there's anything you have seen and want to buy there will be a link in the description um i've got plenty of upgrades to do left like the seat i'm going to put a gripper seat on here i'm going to get some nicer pegs uh peg um mounting and a peg brace uh but yeah next week i have a 16 inch rear tire coming from milk so we'll do an unboxing and a review of that as well as a back 4000 controller for the Suron. we'll do an install video and review because we're going to keep the battery standard for now but yeah hope you've enjoyed today's video if you did subscribe if you didn't subscribe and yeah we'll see you in the next one